Since I first started playing with drones, my ultimate goal has always been to have a flying camera, but not just any flying camera. I want something pretty decent, something like a Micro Four Thirds mirrorless camera. Well, I think I finally found it in the X-Dynamics Evolve 2. So let's take a look at it. This is the X-Dynamics Evolve 2 drone, and as you can see, it's a pretty beefy drone. To give you a better idea of just how beefy, just the battery for the Evolve 2 is bigger than the entire Autel Evo Nano drone when it's folded. But despite its size, it's incredibly light, weighing in at only two kilograms, including the camera and the battery. That's thanks to this carbon fibre monocoque body with magnesium alloy underside. It features X-Dynamics Astra M43 camera system, and as the name implies, it's Micro Four Thirds. But it's not just a Micro Four Thirds sensor. Oh no, this is a fully interchangeable lens camera system. This means you can use it with all the Micro Four Thirds lens you already own. Well, to a point anyway. The camera itself is built into a removable three axis gimbal and there isn't a lot of room at the back of the gimbal for counterbalancing. So you're not gonna be putting huge telephoto lenses on there. The drone actually comes supplied with the Olympus 17 mm F1.8. This might be a little bit narrower than you're used to if you're coming from a consumer drone like an Autel Evo Nano or a Mavic Mini or something. If it's not wide enough though, well, it's some interchangeable lens micro four thirds camera. So you can just take it off and put something wider on. The camera supports full manual exposure control, including the aperture, and you get autofocus and manual focus control from the controller, or as X-Dynamics prefers to call it, the ground station. As you've probably figured out by now, this isn't just your average drone. It fits somewhere a little bit above the DJI Mavic Cine 3 and the Phantom 4, but a little bit below the DJI Inspire 2, and the cost reflects this quite nicely. It's not quite perfect just yet, though. For example, the Evolve 2 features obstacle avoidance sensors, although they don't actually do anything. And there's also no automated flight modes or active tracking, yet. On a drone of this type though, they're not really essential features, so you can see why they've not been made a priority, and there may be things that you might not even miss. X-Dynamics has told me that their goal, first and foremost, is to get the thing up in the air, get it flying well, get it flying steady and shooting great footage. All the bells and whistles will come in future firmware updates. And they are updating the firmware regularly, so hopefully we won't have to wait too long for some of those features to arrive. Okay, I think it's about time we talked about the ground station. This is probably the most advanced and fancy looking controller for a drone I've ever seen. It has not one but two built-in touchscreen displays, each with a thousand nits of brightness, which makes them pretty easy to keep an eye on during the day. Other than the two big screens, the top is fairly simple. You've got your two sticks, a power button, an automated takeoff and landing button, as well as your home button. The rest of the main interface is done via the two touchscreens. But there are also extra buttons around the back and underneath. We've got buttons to start and stop video recording to shoot a photo, as well as others you can set up for custom features. There are dials to adjust the angle of the camera, the switch to go between altitude, position and sport modes, as well as a Type-C USB socket, a full-sized HDMI socket, and a micro SD card slot. There are also a couple of connectors for attaching external antennas. Underneath, we have four more buttons that you can customize to perform various tasks. And there's also a quarter 20 mounting socket for attaching it to a tripod or other stand when you don't want to have to hold the weight of this thing in your hands. And it is pretty beefy, weighing at around a kilo and a half. After we put the lens and props on, firing the drone up is a pretty simple process. It's pretty much like any other drone. It's a double tap on the battery and a long press on the controller's power button. The battery is rated for 33 minutes, but of course this is a slight overestimation as it is with just about every drone out there. These tests are done in ideal conditions, in no wind. In the real world, I find I get about 25 or 26 minutes, but this isn't a terrible battery time. You will want to have a few spares out with you though. Once the ground station's booted up, we can see that both screens are lit up with information. One of the things I really like about this is that it shows us a checklist of things to, well, check before we take off. On the top display, you can see we have more options. And while a phone isn't required to operate the ground station, you'll almost certainly want to have yours running as a hotspot so that your controller can get online to check the weather and download the maps. Of course, you can download maps in advance and use them offline if that's what you prefer. Once we go through our checklist and fire up the propellers on the drone, the top display switches to the camera and the bottom is our map. 
And once it goes in the air, we get all of the usual flight controls as well as absolute control over the camera system, which is the important bit. You get control over pretty much everything you'd expect with a regular ground-based manual control camera. There's no continuous autofocus, but there is touch to focus. All you need to do is tap on the screen and it'll focus at that point. Of course, you get full aperture, ISO and shutter speed control. And if you find the shutter speed is a little too quick at the aperture and ISO combination you've chosen, because it's just a standard micro four thirds lens, you can always add an ND filter onto the end. That's what I've been doing today. I've got the BMW XS Pro MRC Nano 1 to 5 stop variable ND filter. God, that's a mouthful. I've got that on my lens and that's what I've been using all day today. Obviously, you can't adjust the strength of the variable ND once it's in the air. So what I generally do is I'll fly it up in the air, get a baseline for an exposure, bring it back down, turn the ND to the appropriate setting to give me a whatever shutter speed I need and then send it back up to actually go and film stuff. The Evolve 2 features two separate memory card slots. One of them is a standard micro SD, which is used to shoot H.264 and H.265 4K footage. Around the other side is a CFast 2.0 slot, which lets you shoot full 10-bit ProRes 422, and you can even shoot 4K at up to 120 frames per second. This is really awesome, except for the fact that pretty much everybody's abandoned CFast now and shifted over to CF Express. In fact, I don't even own any CFast 2.0 cars, so I've been unable to test this. I did order one, but it hasn't arrived in time for this review. So as soon as it does get here, I'll come out again and I'll update the review on DIYP. So be sure to check back. As you can see though, even the H.265 footage to the micro SD card looks really good. And it's a pleasure to work within DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro and all your usual video editing applications. You just drag it in and put it on the timeline like you would any other camera. The color and contrast and dynamic range of such a large sensor means it cuts in fairly seamlessly with cameras from the ground, particularly other micro four thirds cameras like my Panasonic GH5s, which is exactly what you want in a drone designed for filmmaking. This isn't, you know, some sub 250 gram drone that you just throw in the air and get pretty footage of your latest holiday. This is a cinematic drone designed for cinematic use. You know, you want to be able to cut it and edit it in with ground-based cameras. And if you're a Panasonic Micro Four Thirds video shooter, this is ideal. But aside from the video, actually flying this thing is amazing. It flies very well and it's extremely stable in the air, even in fairly strong winds. In the regular altitude and position modes, it reaches a fairly respectable speed of about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Throwing this thing into sport mode though, oh boy, the Evolve 2 has an official max speed of around 55 miles per hour, but I've had it go 58, a little bit more than that a couple of times. But it is worth mentioning that it can take some time to get up to that speed. X-Dynamics did recently release a firmware though that should hopefully help get it up to full speed faster if you do need to fly in sport mode. On a little drone like the Autel Evo Nano or the DJI Mini 3, sport mode's a lot of fun and the Evolve 2 sport mode dials that all the way up to 11. But realistically, unless you're filming a car chase or have a very specific need for a certain shot, it's probably quite rare that you're gonna be flying in sport mode unless there's an emergency and you just need to get your drone back real quick. Like you're over water and your battery's dying and you just wanna make sure that if it does come down, it comes down over the land. That being said, even at its maximum speed, the camera on this thing is rock solid. I've tried to push this as much as I can and I did not see a single bit of the jello wobble normally associated with CMOS rolling shutter sensors, especially when they're traveling at some speed. And it's just as elegant at slow speeds as it is fun at the fast ones. The controls are very responsive, but also quite subtle when they need to be. If you want to do a slow approach or orbit around a subject, it does it very well. You're going to need a little practice to get your speed and your movement spot on, but when you nail it, it just looks amazing. It would be nice if there were some automated flight modes to assist with things like this sometimes, but with practice, you can shoot them manually just fine. Now, one thing I want to talk about on the ground controller is the HDMI socket. When I first saw this, I thought, this is awesome. I can plug it into an external recorder or something like the Yolo Box Pro and stream live to the web as I'm flying. And you sort of can, but there are a couple of things you need to bear in mind. For a start, as soon as you plug anything into the HDMI socket, the ground station reboots itself. So you don't want to have your drone already up in the air and plug something in. This also means that if you plug something in and turn it on, you want to make sure that lead is secure and cannot come out during the flights. Now, the other problem, probably the bigger problem, is that when you 
do plug something into the HDMI socket, that top display disables completely. If you're plugging into like a big monitor to get a wider view of what's going on, then that's fine. But if you're plugged into like a YOLO Box Pro and someone else is monitoring the stream, or if you're plugged into something that doesn't even have a display, like the Holy Land HDMI transmitters that, you know, <laughs> they send your signal several hundred feet away, then you're basically flying blind. Yes, you still have your maps and the GPS and all that kind of stuff that you can rely on to tell you where you are, but you cannot see what your camera sees. It would be nice if these two were mirrored rather than shutting off the internal one and sending the signal outside instead. I don't know if it's perhaps a hardware limitation. I'm hoping it's a software one and there's something that the guys at X Dynamics might be able to resolve one day. So as I said earlier, it's not a perfect drone, but it's pretty close. Maybe we'll see some software updates coming in the future to fix some of the issues, but it still has a little way to go to get that perfect score. That being said, it's not a terrible drone by any stretch of the imagination. If your goal is to be able to shoot aerial footage that matches the quality of your ground-based footage so you can edit them all together and get a seamless, consistent look throughout in your final edit, then this is the kind of drone that you want. And if you're buying it to shoot things like weddings and commercials, well then it's going to pay for itself in no time at all. And that really is the demographic that this drone is targeted towards. It's wedding and commercial filmmakers who will buy this as a tool to make their business more money, just like any other camera in their arsenal. If you just want easy mode flying with footage you can take straight out of the drone and upload to YouTube, then this isn't the drone you want to be buying. If you have any questions about this drone, drop them down in the comments below. And be sure to read the full written review to go along with this video on DIYphotography.net and keep checking back on it because as soon as that CFast card shows up, I'll be shooting some 4K 120 footage. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.